Hi, I'm Colette Burson. Hi, I'm John Lee Hancock. Hey, I'm Jeff Wadlow. And you are watching Movers and Shakers. Movers and Shakers. Movers and Shakers. Unlimited. What's up guys, I'm here at 2017 Virginia Film Festival and I'm here with special guest Colette Burson. How's it going? It's going good. Good, good, how are good. You? I'm good. Uh, so tell me, how has the weekend been thus far for you here in uh, Charlottesville? The weekend is really great. It's also very close to where I shot. I shot my movie in Richmond, Virginia. Yes. And uh, so several of my actors have been here and, and also I'm an alum. I went to the University of Virginia yeah. and I'm a very proud alum. I loved UVA so it's just been a great happy thing. Great. Well, that's actually a great transition. Can you talk a bit about um, the film and, and how it, you know, came came about? Well, the film's called Permanent, yes. and it is uh, kind of the coming of age story of an ent a family. You know, this this little unit, and it's told through the metaphor of hair. Sure. It's set in 1982, and the sort of inciting incident, I would say, for me writing it was I got a permanent. A lot of women did in the 80s, a, a perm or a permanent, and it destroyed my social life as well as my <laughs> hair follicles, and it was just really it was just such a disaster. And but you know, they say comedy plus time. I mean, tragedy plus time equals comedy. So. Uh, time has passed and now I think it's very funny and the audience seems to think it's funny so that's good. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, touching on that, with uh, for, for someone who is trying to pursue you know, a career with, because you've had an opportunity over the course of your career to do a lot of writing as well as directing, and what I like to know is for someone, for the folks that we had that are watching out there, for someone who wants to be wants to get into screenwriting, would you suggest that they have that you know director uh, um, uh, skill set in their you know in their toolbox in order to really have their you know have their voice felt as a writer? Uh, no, I don't think you have to. I mean, I love directing. It right. makes me really happy. But I don't think that you have to be a director in order to write. Like, I do think that writing is a calling all its own, and uh, and you can write. But I think that, um, you know, I think if you want to write, first of all, one must get very serious about writing. Like, yes. that's number one. And one must get very serious about failing. Because when you write, you fail a great deal all the time. And, uh, and the things that help you keep going are just sort of, a belief in yourself and, and being very excited about whatever you're writing creatively and then um, and then also you, you really need a creative community I think um, you know there's different paths to becoming a screenwriter I um, I went the graduate school path I, I okay. went into I went to NYU as a playwright and it's one of the few actually the only program in the country that I know of where you can go in as a playwright but be trained in screenwriting and television writing so that's what happened to me I went and I was trained in these other mediums um, and and also also, NYU uh, gave me that community. So, you know, I think it's very difficult for people to say, oh, I'm a writer, I'm a writer. You know, you always sort of feel a little bit in the back of your head like you're a phony. Mm -hmm. But if you have a community, whether it's in grad school or a community you create, then you don't feel that way as much because you're surrounded by that people and they reinforce your desire. But you must if you don't go to graduate school or live in a big and live in LA or New York which are very helpful if you don't do that then you really must very consciously create your community in order for it to work i think okay and in in that same regard would you also say that and i know everyone for everyone their path is different but would you yeah. say that uh, having having enough time to create um, create material uh, has been key because I know with with some screenwriters you know they they churn out you know a lot of you know uh, um, material you know year after year and then a lot of others are very purposeful in what they do and and you know take their time to create it 
Um, is your question like purposeful versus prolific, or does it have to do with how do you find time? Well, I guess more along the lines of instead of instead of doing you know uh, um, project after project taking your time and actually taking the time to develop it, you know, over over a period of time instead of, you know, Going just, on to the next yeah, thing. exactly. Well, there's a few there's a few things in your question. I mean, how does a writer get time? How yes. does a writer get time without a trust fund? That's sure. the first thing I hear you asking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's extraordinarily difficult, yeah. right? It's very tricky. Like, I was talking to someone at UVA who was in one of the creative seminars, and she said, Colette, I'm living in Brooklyn, but I have a corporate job, and I feel like I don't have time for my art. And I was saying, you know, it's very difficult. You cannot hold a, a job that comfortably pays your bills and writing at the same time you know like and and pursuing art because they are antithetical corporate is antithetical to artistic it's the exact polar opposite and you must choose which one to favor sure. and so if you favor corporate you will pay your bills but art may indeed become more and more of a hobby and if you favor artistic then then you may have trouble paying your rent right you may have to be a waitress you may have to do things you don't want to do so that's always the oh right. and we have a little <laughs> song and I will sing the rest of my answer <laughs> Um, so, uh, but then in terms of, I do think for every writer it's a fine line between how much, how much do you rewrite, right? right. So you, you have your screenplay, you know, you need to get some notes on it and you need to rewrite it. Maybe you rewrite it twice, but I think, H Hamilton aside, there are exceptions, but generally speaking you should then move on because the way you first build a shoe, you know, when you're first starting out writing will not be the way you build it two or three years later. You know what I mean? And so to keep yourself in that form where you make very important decisions from the get-go that are not, you know what I mean? Like it's better, it's better for you to write something new. So it's, it's, a, it's a balance between prolific and yet doing due diligence, rewriting, learning what you needed to learn from that project. Gotcha. And lastly, with, uh, with Permanent, um, now that we're at the Virginia Film Festival, with, with films, when you're submitting it, it's, you know, it's, I always call it a marathon where uh, it's about is getting your project there as much as possible. So can you talk a bit about possibly some other festivals that you're, that you're uh, looking at now? Well, you now know, um, it is a marathon. You have to keep supporting your film and fighting for it at yeah. every step. Um, so my movie is going to Stockholm next weekend, nice. and I'm okay. going to go with it. Okay. And, uh, and then um, it will open in seven cities uh, on December 15th. And if you'd like to support the movie, you can... You know, you can if you've seen the movie, you can rate it on IMDb or on Rotten Tomatoes, and um, and if you just like to follow, I do have an Instagram for the movie that's kind of like my okay, quirky, there you go. There you go, my yeah. quirky journey through it, and it's permanent movie okay. at Instagram. So if All you right. want just sort of a, a look behind the scenes, that's what that is. All right, awesome. Well, there you guys have it. Again, I'm at 2017 Virginia Film Festival. I'm Brandon Choi. This is Colette Burnson. I'll see you soon. <laughs>